I call the member for Goldstein. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Health and Aged Care. Will the Minister update the House on what the government is doing to improve affordable medicines and access to Medicare and medicines for all Australians? Is the Minister aware of any alternative approaches? The Minister for Health and Aged Care. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I thank the member for Goldstein for his question. And it's always a pleasure to emphasise this government's commitment to available affordable medicines and Medicare in general. Our $4 billion increase in spending over the next four years, our $95 billion investment in public hospitals in the current five years, our determination to constantly make medicines affordable to all Australians, and as I often say, the Labor Party's dirty secret behind the dirty Medi-Scare lie is that there actually wasn't any Labor health policy at all. So, in the absence of no Labor health policy, odd, I mean, you would think that Labor would have a health policy on an important area such as medicines. I've had to go back to a previous Minister for Health in a previous Labor government um, who said, and I quote, Health Minister Nicola Roxon makes no apology for deferring the listing of a number of critical drugs on the pharmaceutical benefits scheme. Health Minister Nicola Roxon said, ultimately, I think the important point is that we can't in every instance guarantee that a drug will be listed immediately because there are financial consequences for doing that. So that is exactly the approach of Labor. We can't guarantee that we can list breakthrough medicines and breakthrough cures. By contrast, this government has never shied away from that task. The commitment that we made when we came to government, we have never stepped away from. And, Mr Speaker, I want to demonstrate that with an important listing. The biggest ever listing on the PBS was a billion dollars. A billion dollars for four medicines to cure hepatitis C in Australia. Harvoni, Savalda, Declinzin and Ibavia. Four medicines between them comprise 12 weeks of taking the tablets, the treatment, and then it actually is a cure. We are the first and probably the only jurisdiction in the world to make available this cure to every single Australian without fear or favour. As Bob Geldof said, stigma, shame and fear can suffocate awareness in hepatitis C. So our approach was every individual, wherever they are, and we know that there are ordinary people like us who have contracted hep C, but there are many people on the margins who have hep C. It's overrepresented in the homeless, in injecting drug users, in remote communities, in the indigenous populations, in prisons. So I wrote to every single state health minister to say, I want you to make these, available, these cures available to every single person, to the homeless, to those in prisons, to those who are disadvantaged, to those in drug and alcohol cliques. That's part of the government's $1 billion spend on medicines for hep C. Yeah, yeah. That's unprecedented in this country. And the point I make, Mr Speaker, is in the absence <clears> of a medicines <throat> policy from the opposition, and I invite them to actually provide their medicines policy any time, we know that only a government that carefully manages the national accounts the can manage this investment. Time.